<laughs> I'm sorry. It's not funny. It's not funny. I just, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it kind of is funny. Okay. Kinda. But if something comes up with it, comes up with this, though, this man, okay. from what you told me, <laughs> he does have a ton of followers. You can put this man on blast. I mean, he's going to put you on blast. I'm going to put him on blast. No, but that's what I'm saying. Him. That's Welcome to Your Friends Podcast. I'm your host, Megan Page, and this is my lovely co-host, Liv. Hello. This is Your Friends Podcast because we're your friends. Let's give let's me the story. Yeah, let's start give me with the, the story. story. Let's I've been start waiting. With the story. Okay. You have been waiting very patiently. The last thing I texted you was that I was going to go on this guy's podcast and that I met this guy off Bumble. I matched with him on Bumble, and in his bio, it was like, oh, I do a podcast, and he's like, staying in the same city that I am. He messages me and is like, you seem too good to be true. Like, that's so cool that you do a podcast. Da, da, da. And I was like, okay, like, that seems normal. Like, that seems pretty nice. And then we get to talking on Snapchat, and we're just talking, like, normally, talking about podcasts, about what podcasts we listen to. And then he's like, oh, like, do you want to come over and talk about podcasts? And then do you want to come on my podcast? Um, in like a few days and at this point I'm like I'm living in my car like I don't have anything to lose I pull up okay pull up to this man's crib I get out of the car and I open the gate and I notice there's just security cameras like everywhere and it's a small apartment it's a little sus oh it's a little sus oh and we'll we'll give this guy a name a fake name okay we're gonna call him Todd Todd okay Todd yeah I like that for sure so Todd, Todd over here, okay. is like, all right, come inside, like, let's go. So I, I go inside. Mind you, it's like 1 a.m. I go inside, and I'm sleep deprived. I'm tired. I had Instacarted, like, all day. When you're tired and sleep deprived and, like, dehydrated, I feel like you're not fully self-aware. Right, yeah. Like, you're not as psychoanalyzing everyone and not as aware as you usually are. Mm -hmm. Right when I got there, he was like, tell me your life story, like, start to finish. Like, how how did you end up living in your car? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, can you explain it to me? And I'm like, yeah, dude, like, totally. So, <laughs> and I'm so sleep deprived. I'm telling, like, this whole story, start to finish of my life story. And obviously, I leave out a lot, but 45 go minutes go by of mm -hmm. me telling the story. And he's just like giving me this really intense eye contact. Okay. Like, like dead eyes, but like crazy eyes. Okay. So it's, it's like more than just he's listening. And I go, you know, you kind of have sociopath eyes. <laughs> Has anyone ever told you that? Oh, like, okay. I just said Get that. right to the point. I was, I was just flat out. Yeah. Flat okay. out straight to the point. And he goes, yeah, actually people have told me that. And I go... <laughs> For some reason, I just didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, okay. Red like, flag, though. Red flag, though. Major red flag. Major red flag. Major <laughs> red flag Major. there. Not good. But right after that is, like, he starts complimenting me and, like, saying, like, oh, like, I want to take you to New York. Like, we can go on business trips to New York. And you can be, like, the Tana Mojo to my Bryce Hall. And, like, we can help each other and become number one podcast and all this stuff. I'm like, this sounds way too good to be true. But... Obviously, it's so charming and coming off, like, everything I want to hear. Right. I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, that sounds great. I'm in. We go to bed because I was so f I was so tired. Go to bed. I wake up the next morning, and I leave early in the morning because I had a therapy appointment early in the morning. So I leave. And then he's like, oh, do you want to come back later tonight? And... You can spend the night, and then I early in the morning, we can do a podcast. And I was like, fuck yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. So. <laughs> Stop. I'm on edge here. What is it? Don't, don't leave out any, any details. <laughs> I yeah, won't. please. I won't. This, and this is where it gets good. Like, this is the good part. Okay, so. So I go back there the next night. And I got some, I got some sleep that night. Well rested. I was okay. well rested. My You're mind on your A game. I was on my A game. Yeah. My mind was clearer. Okay. I was psychoanalyzing 
this man the fuck out of this man. Yeah, and I you're really good at it too, so. You, thank I you. already know. Thank you. You know, I, I, I've i had my fair shares of sociopaths and narcissists. Um, I can spot them now, like, mm-hmm. especially sociopaths. Anyways, more on that later. So I go there that night, the next night, and I think I got there at, like, I got there at 12. I was still pretty tired, though, and I had a stressful day because I Instacarted, like, 12 hours, and I was just, I was done. I was done for. All I wanted to do was take some dabs <laughs> and chill right. and, like, talk about podcasts and just chill. So I get there, and we go in his room, and I'm sitting down, and I'm, like, getting all my dab stuff out, getting ready to take a dab, and he starts he starts playing, like, really loud music, like rock metal, which is, like, fine, right? That's a vibe, whatever. But it's, like, really loud. <laughs> and and then he starts, like, running around his room, kicking and, like, yelling. And, like, I'm, like, are you on drugs? Or, right. s- like, what, what are you doing? Like, you would do in, like, a mosh pit or something? Yeah, like, you would do in a mosh pit. And he, it was, like... He was acting super hyper, but he wasn't acting this way before. Okay. And I was like, what the fuck? And I could tell, I could tell in that moment that he was doing it on purpose. Like he wanted to get an emotional reaction out of me. And I was like, okay, this is, this is weird, but I'm just like, I'm just going to ignore it. So then he starts talking about, he starts talking about a serial killer that's like, there's a serial killer in... Oh, yeah, I've heard about that in the Sacramento area. In the Sacramento area. And so he kept talking about that and bringing it up and being like, but this is way better than than your car, right? 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 Because there's no serial killer here, right? Like, this is way better, right? And just getting in my face, like, yelling at me, like, yelling this in my face. Oh, my God. And then, like, hitting me. You know how, you know when people, like... Yeah, like, do, like, this thing yeah, when they're and trying to get your he attention. he was, like, doing that on my leg and just, like, shaking me. And I was just, like, I, instead of, like, a fight fight or flight response, it was more of a freeze. Like, I was just froze, and I was just, right. like, what the, f- what is going on? In shock, yeah. I was just in shock. He's, like, yeah, no, I just have severe ADHD and was trying to, like, give that as an excuse. Okay. And then completely changed the conversation and starts telling me, you're the most, like, you're one of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen. Your eyes are, like, none other than I've seen. Like, your freckles, da da You have to know that you're above average, da, da, da. And I'm, like, wow, you are love-bombing the fuck out of me. Like, everything you're saying is a lie. Like, I was, like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> you sounded crazy. And... Well, you are beautiful, but... <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> But in that instance, the way it came up is very yeah, in that nerve-wracking. In that instance of, like, pivoting the conversation so yeah. abruptly and just, like, love bombing, like, using charm and, like, compliments as a form of manipulation, s- huge red flag. Mind you, I, f- like, feel sick to my stomach. Like, I'm getting such bad vibes, I feel like I'm about to throw up. Oh, my God. Because he's, like... He's so he's being so intense, and I, I said that multiple times. I was like, "Hey, you're really stressing me out right now. Like, can you please calm down?" And he just wouldn't. He just kept bouncing, screaming. I'm just like, oh. and and so I'm like, "Okay, like, do you want a dab? Like, can you calm down? Like, <laughs> like I'm I'm just like thinking a dab would work. Like, maybe he does have ADHD. Like, I don't know. Um, so I'm like trying to get my dab stuff together." And then he goes over and turns off the light. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm about to die. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) This is it. Was the music still playing? The music music stopped. Okay. The music stopped. He turns off the light. Is it, like, completely pitch black or is it? Completely, completely pitch black. I am on the floor. I'm sitting on the floor. My stomach hurts. I feel like I'm about to throw up. And then I see a red, like, a red light coming (gasps) out of the vent. No way. Coming out of the vent. And and I and he he says he says to me, Oh, backstory really quick. <laughs> this is crazy, by the way. He had previously told me how he thinks that the cartel is after him because he like a year ago 
these anonymous guys would send him thousands of dollars from all over like the the world Mm -hmm. and like pay him to do certain like prank videos because he has a channel where he does pranks i Mm -hmm. guess and and then they would send him thousands of dollars but then he finally was like i'm not doing business with with faceless people yeah and then now he thinks that they're after him and that's why he has security cameras everywhere and so he told me he told me that earlier, right? So now I'm on the floor and I'm thinking, you're about to die. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking right. this, this this red laser light in the vent is like the cartel, like in the vent recording us, <coughs> and then they're about to kidnap us. Like, oh. Oh, which now like doesn't make any sense. But in the moment, I thought I was gonna die and get kidnapped. Um, so yeah, I see this red light, and then he goes, "Oh my God, is someone in the vent recording us?" <gasps> I start crying. I, start, I would too. I start crying. Oh dude. my god, dude! It was so scary. That's terrifying. It was so fucking scary, and I'm just like, "What the fuck?" And I start, I start crying, yeah. and then I hear him, then I hear him laughing. No. Yeah, and then he turns on the light and pulls out a laser pointer. No. A fucking laser pointer. He pointed a laser pointer at the vent. To try to convince me that that was happening just to, like, get an emotional reaction out of me. To, like, make me cry. To scare me. Like, all of the above. And and right after that, (laughs) right when he turned on the light and he's laughing, I start throwing up. (gasps) I'm just, I'm just, I am on this man's floor Uh sobbing and throwing up. Because I'm so stressed out and yeah. scared. And I told him, I was like, I'm so stressed out, you're going to make me throw up. Like, oh. <laughs> And then right after that, I, right after I was done throwing up, I didn't clean that shit up. Well, it was I just on the ground? Yeah. Like not even close to the bathroom? Yep. Nope. On the ground. Okay, good for you. He yeah. totally deserves that. Yeah. He, he can clean that up. Yeah. And I got my shit. And I started leaving, and he says to me, are you sure you want to go out there when the serial killer's out there? No. You know I'm not the serial killer. No. And I go, I'll take my fucking chances with the serial killer, you fucking sociopath. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, verbatim. And then I got in my car, and I went back to the place that I sleep at. Oh my god. And is that the end of the story? Oh, no. Um so so then I block him. Okay. And he DMs Philip, <gasps> my the podcast producer. No yep. way. Yep, he de- <laughs> So he reaches out to me and I I see it in my DM request. So I check him every once in a while, but I check my DM request and he says, "Hey, have you seen Megan? She just disappeared." Oh and and so I was like, damn it, Megan's going to cancel on me for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent Megan a screenshot of the DM. I'm like, hey, are you good? Who the fuck is this dude? <laughs> and she's like, oh, fuck no. You don't respond to him. He's crazy. And then, uh, so I don't respond to him. And today, the day of the podcast, he... Likes one of my pictures and he comments, "Hey, please check your DMs. It's urgent or something." <laughs> what the fuck? What is that? Oh is God. that not a form of stalking? It is. No, for sure. <laughs> that's why. That's why I locked the door and I was like, just in case, just in case he's, you know. Bro, is that not fucking insane? That's fucking terrifying. Okay. <laughs> You're making me, I just created a theory listening to the story. First off, I am so sorry you had to go through that. That is absolutely, undeniably terrifying, blood-curdling, horrifyingly traumatizing. It was, dude. I mean, especially to the point where you're throwing up. I mean, that makes complete sense. I mean, I, holy shit, (laughs) you know, that's scary as fuck. It was so fucking, like my, it's like. When something like that happens, it's almost like your brain takes days to yeah. process. Like, yeah. my brain's still processing it. It's so weird. Yeah. It was it was fucked That's up. That's so scary. Especially with the serial killer running around. Okay. 
So <laughs> I've been thinking about this serial killer a lot. Okay? A lot. Really? I've been thinking about it. Yeah, because I watched I a lot to. of crime shows growing up. My stepmom always had them on, like, late at night. And they used to terrify me. And then I got used to them. And then I'm, like, analyzing these shows. And I'm like, okay, let me pay attention. You know? like. Yeah. This is some SVU shit right here. So it got to the point where the other day me and my roommate were walking in that like alley and we saw this old man fall off his bike and I like run to help him, you know, but he was acting like weird about it and he like wasn't really saying anything and he was like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I was like, okay. And it was on the way to our cars. So in my head, I'm like, okay, this guy could be a serial killer. Honestly, like this, that reminded me of like something from you. Yeah. Have you seen the show You? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was like, okay, I'm getting You vibes here. Definitely. Anyway, so I've been, like, thinking about this, you know. What if that man was, is the serial killer? Like, Dude. first off, the camera excuse that he had makes no sense. Having those cameras would be to tell if someone is investigating his property. And the light... The laser could just be an excuse for having a camera in his bedroom, and the laser just making you think that there's no camera there when there actually is. Yeah, you were you were being recorded, man. Yeah, definitely being recorded. You guys like didn't do the do or anything, did you? <gasps> See, I told you not to leave out any details. You asked. <laughs> oh, it was the first night, not the second. No, okay, yeah. I thought he was normal. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that's fine. Did you do it in his bedroom? In the same room where you saw the... <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> I just, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it kind of is funny. Okay. Kinda. But if something comes up with it, comes up with this, though, this man, okay. from what you told me, <laughs> he does have a ton of followers. You can put this man on blast. I True. mean, he's going to put you on blast. I'm gonna put him on blast. No, but that's what I'm saying. Him. That's what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> this is happening before anything comes out or anything like that. Yeah. You know, you have witnesses. Yeah. You have his DMs. Like that's true. Literally, I would not be shocked if you went to the cops about this right now. Honestly, m- uh, people, p- a lot of like friends who I've talked to about it were telling me like maybe you should get a restraining order. And now I'm like I'm honestly considering it, especially. DMing you, like, how did he even find your page, first of all? Okay, like, so I I was I was wondering the same thing, but then your last post, Megan, <laughs> on, like, the fourth picture, you tagged Pod Dog Studios. Oh, I did. So I it's did. like, I, fucking I was did. like, okay, well, obviously that's how. Because at first oh, I was like, what the yeah. fuck? How does, how does this dude find me? Oh. Yeah, no. I and then I was like, oh, wait, that never mind. That makes so much sense. That makes sense. Okay, so it's not as crazy, but it's still fucking insane okay so you have blocked him have you blocked him i didn't block him because i kind of wanted to see what what would happen <laughs> next <laughs> megan okay. was like block him and then i didn't and then he liked one of my pictures and then commented <laughs> what i told you oh my god like hey p- check your dms it's urgent. okay so this man is obviously certified psycho yeah and um isn't that crazy like i literally just Walked upon having beef with another podcaster, sociopath, psycho. That's so scary. <laughs> like have you you've fuck? seen his podcast? Though, so you know his podcast is real, right? Yeah, and it, so he lied. He he told me that he made it sound like he had all these videos, all these subscribers, which he does have a lot of subscribers on his other YouTube channel. But on his podcast YouTube channel, I found it, and it only has thirteen subscribers, and it only has one video up. And it's like really shitty quality. Like he built the, he built the podcast studio in his apartment, and it's like, I don't know if if that if that's his way of thinking and how he treats people, he's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah. But it's scary that he has a platform. Yeah. Like, that's scary. But he's definitely. How I long ago was the other channel? Like, did he stop doing the other channel? Oh, he's still doing the other channel. Oh, okay. And it's, like, prank videos, and I'm pretty sure they're so cringy. I couldn't even bring myself to watch one. And the thing is, he got flown out by these famous YouTubers, like, a year ago. And, like, got put in this... I don't know if I, don't know if I should... I probably shouldn't say the YouTube... Well, I'll, br- I'll bleep it out. You know the Nelk boys? Absolutely. Yeah, so he got flown out by them. And got to, st- like, stay overnight. How do you know? 
Uh, he uh, he showed he showed me the video. He's in the video. He's oh, in he Enough is. Boys video. He's actually in the video. Yeah. Okay. So one of his prank videos. So he uh, before he had this YouTube channel, he had a combined YouTube channel with his friends, and it was like a combined prank channel, and they would just do pranks. And they had this one prank uh, called the Big Like Jewel, and they would go around, and it got like seven point eight million views, I believe. And so the Nelf boys reached out to him because of that video and flew them out and helped them. I think they filmed another, like, Big Jewel video in, oh, wow. in L.A. with the Nelf boys. Um, and he showed me the video, and I, like, thought that shit was so cool. Mm-hmm. And it, But now I'm just like, damn, like, I, I, f- I feel like, like, he's obviously a sociopath for sure. Like, something's deeply wrong there. Definitely. And I feel like, Doing pranks, you kind of have to have a low empathy in order yeah. to, to, to keep that up. And yeah. he, like, he does it, like, all the time. He's like, oh, I got to film a new prank video. Like, da, 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 da. like, So he enjoys seeing that reaction from people. 100%. That's serial killer vibes. Yeah. That's literally serial killer vibes. It, it really is. And psychopaths. Like, they like seeing those emotions from people because they don't have them themselves. Exactly. And, and it makes them feel power over over you yeah and like i have such good like warn- warning signs yeah. for for sociopaths like if they have dead eyes if if they if they enjoy like if they use charm to manipulate you like mm. if what they're saying is too good to be true most of the time it is and i also live by this rule called the 90 percent rule mm-hmm and what the 90% rule is, is basically if someone is doing something and if you're like, you know what, 90% of people wouldn't do that, that's a red flag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> but, yeah, the 90% rule, I feel like that's some shit to live by. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is kind of hard, though, because, like, you don't know everyone. You know, I feel like I'm a different person once you get to know me. Yeah. You know, because, like, I'm a, fu- I'm a fucking goober, you know. <laughs> I'm, like, like, I seem, like, my boyfriend says I'm on crack all the time just because I'm, like, random and, like, super ADHD all the time, oh you know. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know that about me. And when they get to know me, they're like, okay, you're weird. <laughs> like, you're straight up, you're just weird. Yeah. Like, okay. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't get to know me. <laughs> but I think that is kind of a hard rule to live by, but I get what you're saying there. That, like, if that's not basic human, if it's, like, way out of the ordinary, yeah, you know, it's not funny, it's not enjoyable, it's not quirky, it's not cute, yeah. it's fucking scary. Yeah. 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 That is, that's red flags, red flags, red flags, red flags. Get your ass out of there. Definitely. And I feel like, like piggybacking off of that, if you feel like when, if you're alone with someone and they make you feel scared to be alone with them, yeah. that is number one red flag. Yeah. And that's not something you can give a second chance on either. If, especially when you're starting to know someone, like they make you uncomfortable, not in like the, oh, I'm nervous. Yeah. Not in like I'm the nervy. Right, not in like that, mm-hmm. but like in the um I don't know what the fuck is going on here right now and I'm low key like don't know if my life is gonna contend you know, like yeah. you don't know you really don't have any assurance that you're safe. Yeah, it's like you're confused too. Yeah. You're confused like anything like that, it's not gonna go away. Yeah. You might be able to convince yourself that, oh, they're fine, you know, like, they're not going to hurt me. They have good intentions. But most of the time, that does not go away. I saw this post the other day that was, like, you know, if you have a bad feeling with someone, like, in a relationship in the very beginning, that's probably what's going to cause you to break up. Yeah. Because you will convince yourself that it's fine and you'll move on. But most of the time, like, if you have issues in the beginning that you can't sort out and you can't get past – then those are going to come up whether you, you know, you like it or not. You can convince yourself otherwise for years. Yeah. For years. For so long. So long, you know, because you're happy and content except for this piece. Yeah. And that piece will forever keep you from being, you know, reaching your full ability to be happy with that person 
and in their company, you know? Yeah, and it'll always come back. It'll yeah. always come up, and it'll start a fire Yeah, if you don't put it out. Yeah. And, ooh, I, I definitely feel that, especially with my last relationship. Like, there was a huge thing, and I was just like, no, that's not true, that's not true. But it ended up being the exact reason why we broke up. And it's like, you can convince yourself that it's not real, and that it's in the... And especially if the other person is gaslighting you and making you feel like it's not real and you're crazy, like... Yeah. Like, but it always comes up. It always comes back. And, yeah. I will say there are some exceptions. You know, like, I tend to be a self-destructive person. So in my previous relationships, you know, I think, like, oh, they don't love me like I love them. So let me go ahead and destroy this before they can get to me. Right. You know? And that's, that's where, like, my anxiety gets the best of me. But I think anxiety is different than those things that you can't get past with other people. Yeah. You know, like personality traits or like certain things that they do that you know that they can't fix. Because a lot of people, if they love you, you know, they'll work on things. Yeah. So. That's very true. But I think having anxiety about things and but being uncomfortable with something someone does is completely different. Completely. Okay. All right. Cut. 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 What? Damn. Damn, that was a hard cut. <laughs> <laughs> hard. That's what's up. And we are back from a smoke break. And if you've stuck around this long, might as well give it a like and a subscribe because that definitely helps us out. And if you want to hear more crazy stories and more fucked up shit about the world, subscribe below. And that's what's up. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's let's talk about space, Liv. Uh, what, what do you have to say? Okay. So I've always had this weird fascination with space, right? Like, it's weird, okay? <laughs> like, I blame the planets and blah, blah, blah. Some basic shit. But anyway, <laughs> recently, I've discovered I also have a weird obsession with, like, the end of the world. I constantly think, like, it's coming to a close. Um, I feel that. It's starting to feel like that it, lately. Yeah, it feels like that. Mm, you know. But <laughs> people I've talked to have said that, like, their whole lives – it's constantly felt like that, you know, like during the Cold War, everyone thought it was going to be the end of the world too, you know? Right. And it's not. They're, the world has, that's what keeps me sane, you know, is knowing that people their whole lives, my grandparents thought that the world was going to end. Yeah. They were sure of it, you know? In and they know that it's not. Yeah. 2012, on my birthday, for a fact, literally December 21st, 2012, I went to school and everyone was like, the world is going to end today, live. You're the cause. Oh. Blah, blah, blah. Live the world's going to end today on your birthday. That's yeah. low-key traumatizing. Oh, yeah. No, it was for sure. I will never forget that, honestly. Oh, my God. I'm like, I'm not even giving y'all cupcakes, motherfuckers. Yeah, fuck like, that. Yeah. <laughs> they don't give I'm me keeping cupcakes. these for myself. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, recently, there has been a discovery of a building. It looks so from, so from cameras, it looks like just like a square, like a block on the moon. And NASA has literally, they, I read an article about it and they were like, yeah, um, so there's this block, they call it like the square, the cube on the moon. And it's literally as big as a building. It's bigger than the building we're in right now. What? It's, they said it's like equivalent to like 10 stories tall at least, I think. I think if I have that right. And it's literally the size of a big ass building, like bigger than my apartment building. Your, on par- the moon. your apartment building is huge, too. Yeah. And NASA has no idea of how it got there. NASA. Like, the, there's, of anyone, they're supposed to know that yeah, shit. Yeah, uh, with anyone, it NASA should know. <laughs> appeared. Like, they're taking pictures one day. The next day, they look up, and there's a fucking building on the moon. And they're what like. What the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck is yeah. that? The last time I read the article, it was, like, about a month ago. They said that they were sending rovers over to investigate it. And they were, like, crapping out when they got near it, I think, if I have that right. Don't quote me on that. (laughs) But, okay, so there's that. Then, then I saw this video of, like, China, um, like, producing, like, a fake sun, like, launching, like, a fake sun. First off, why did they need that? Second. What? Second, like, where, like, no one had any idea they were doing this, and suddenly, like, you can see it. There's. I've also seen videos of people seeing it launch from, like, the other side of the world, like California, right? So, I go, me and my boyfriend, in the middle of the night, decide to go to the coast, 
we go to the bay. We go to San Francisco, and we go to the beach because I love the beach. And I run out there, and it's pitch black. And I look up. I'm looking west, okay? Mm -hmm. It's 4 in the morning. The sun has not risen. The sun rises in the east. Okay, it's pitch black. I can see the moon. And it looks like there is a circular sun. It, like, it literally looks like the sun, but it's not emitting the same. Like, the sky isn't bright. It's just the sun. It's just, like, that bright circle in the sky. And it looks as bright and as circular, like, the size of the sun. What? Like, you know, when what? you look in the sky and you see, like, that bright uh, circle, right? Yeah. It's like that, but nothing else around it. What? Yeah, and you can, like, see clouds kind of, like, covering it a little bit. And that's really it. Okay? And I'm like, hold on. I took a video of it, and I was explaining. I'm like, this is the East Coast. <laughs> I'm looking West. What the fuck is that? You're like, this shit does not add up. No, it doesn't. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? Okay? So then, you know, I've shown my friends this video, and I posted it on my story. And I've had a lot of people send me videos of other people seeing this. And then I saw this one video of, like, four or five of them in what? the sky. China only sent off one. So there's something else out there. And who, who the fuck built that building? Right. No, exactly. What so the fuck? I really think that aliens are like, in first off, in our midst. Second, oh, observing us. Like, And anyone who doesn't think aliens are real are literally ignorant oh, and naive. 100%. And do not have a full, uh, like, a full grasp on the reality of our universe i mean right. it's gigantic we are we are smaller the earth is smaller than an atom compared to the rest of our universe yeah smaller than an atom smaller than a fucking proton if you know that if you guys if you guys know science at all like that's literally a subatomic particle it is as small as science gets so you know it it's it's terrifying to think about it is you know? terrifying. And obviously, like, we have the human complex. We're, like, we're the greatest species on the planet, right? So, right. therefore, we have to be the greatest species in our galaxy. False. Like, our galaxy is small as fuck. It's as small as a piece of sand compared to the rest of our universe, you know? Yeah. Like, there is obviously something out there. They literally just discovered a new planet the other day. A brand new planet that scientists just overlooked completely overlooked this planet in the like next solar system next to ours and it's like the size of jupiter that's so insane and they fucking missed it and you can see it in the sky like it looks like a star and at the right time you can see it in the sky like so many things have been adding up also i okay i'm a big conspiracy theorist and like the whole illuminati shit that's real yeah. That's actually real. I mean, if you, I saw this, like, really, it was, like, chilling, this video of, you know, people who do this or this or just this in general. This stands for a 666, and they put their eye in it. Or, like, this one. Yeah, or this one. This. Yeah. yeah, whatever it is. But this and this and, like, all of these different hand symbols, there is this blood-chilling video, and it has three parts to it. And they're each, like, a minute long, and it's, like, flashing one after the other of celebrities and, like, famous people with hella money who, like, randomly got their start. Like, if you look it up, they randomly Sus. got their start. Sus. and And then it plays clips of people, of these celebrities, talking about how they're controlled. And then when they get asked about it, they can't talk about it. And then... Oh my God! Who is that guy that everyone thinks is a robot? Is it Jeff Bezos? No, um, it's the Facebook uh, guy. Um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Wait, yeah, right? yeah, I think yeah. so. There's a there's an interview with him, and he's sitting in the interview like this. Did I tell you about this already? No, but I I've seen I've seen the video. Yeah, it's fucking weird. And and the interview the interviewer is saying, you know, hey, Mark, we always see you in the sweatshirt. Can you take off the sweatshirt? We've never seen you without the sweatshirt. And he goes, no, no. And he refuses to take off his sweatshirt. And then they ask him another question there. And, like, it gets awkward how weird he gets about this fucking sweatshirt. Yeah. And then they ask him another question about what he's doing. Like, and about the work 
it was like a really in-depth question about the work that he's doing. And I can't remember the exact question. I wish I did. And they ask him this question and he pauses for a second and it literally in his head, like it looks, it looks like he has a mic in his ear and he's listening to it. And he goes, actually, why don't I show you my jacket? And yeah. completely changed, like did not want to talk about that. that. And he takes off his jacket and it literally is like the Illuminati sign and inside the yeah. world. And it was like, we want to change the world or so like their slogan of like changing the world. And it's, it's chilling how off fuck? this video is. Like it's yeah. nothing is right about it. This man literally looks like in this saying, and he continues in the video talking about it and he's like trying to write it off because even the interviewer was like what the fuck yeah like what the hell is that (laughs) what what is this logo like it's not a well-known logo he's like oh it's with the people i work with and work for Uh, sus yeah and but anyway back to this video of all these celebrities you know well-known people like beyonce jay-z like rihanna Katy Perry, like, literally everyone that you could think of famous and not that famous and, like, even our parents' generation all have this, have footage or photos of them doing one of those signs or talking about someone controlling them and how they wish that they had it, like, they paid the piper. You know what that means? Like, like you know, the Pied Piper, like, they do the little whistle thing and, like, they come... And the rats come running. Yeah. So, and the Pied Piper has control over them through the flute. That's, like, the story of the Pied Piper. And you're, like, paying the Piper. So, do you think they wish they never paid the Piper? No, yeah, but that's the thing is, like, some of these celebrities are talking about how they're controlled. There's there's an interview with Jim Carrey where he actually tries to expose them. I I think I know what you're talking about. And he went off the grid for, like, months after that video came out, too. He went completely off the grid. What the fuck? Like, literally none of this is adding up. There's some insane shit going on in Hollywood with the Illuminati. Like, there is so much shit going on behind the scenes. Like, no one knows. And I can't even begin to imagine what is going on. Especially, like, I, I for sure believe in, like, they drink like, like kid blood. Oh you know my what god! I mean? Yeah, like that shit. Like to stay no. young. Like I wouldn't hundred percent believe. No that. one's talking about the article where Justin Bieber literally came out and he didn't name any names, but he said these really famous people came up to him, and like producers and whatnot were like, "Come to this meeting," and it was hella secretive. And he walks in, and they're like, either rape or brutally, like murder this kid. Like you have to hit this kid, and they were all, they had video cameras out, so they were gonna videotape him doing it. And he was like, "No, fuck that," and walks out. And they were like, "If you don't do this, you know, we're gonna ruin you." And he was like, "I don't care. I'll take my chances." And he came out. He's the only one that's really kind of talked about this that I've seen. I mean, I've seen other articles about people who've talked about it, but they've got taken down. You know, a lot of them have gotten murdered, like or suicide, and you know. A lot of this, it's like, it doesn't add up anyway, but no one's talking about this. And he literally was like, I'm a man of Christ. And so, you know, I'm not, I was not about to do that. And I was like, okay, good for you, JB. He he totally is a man of Christ. He'd be going to church. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I'm not personally into Christ and whatnot, but you know, if that keeps you on the right track, good for fucking you. You know, like you do what you need to do to keep yourself morally in check. And if that's religion, then do it, you know? Yeah. Do it. Do whatever you need to keep yourself a morally righteous person. Completely. You know, I don't need that because I just have that constant thought in my head. I don't need to know if God exists to be a good person. But yeah. not a lot of people can do that, you yeah. know? And the, and it's also the fear of death that scares people into religion also. Oh, no. You know? I feel like just religion is, f- it's fully based off of fear. Like yeah. 100%. If you don't do this, you're going to hell. Like that is a full religion based off right. of fear. And I just feel like something that is based off of fear, it just, it doesn't sit right with me. But I completely agree. Like if, if that's what someone needs to keep them on the right track and keep them happy, then believe what makes you happy and it, you know, as long as you're not hurting anyone else, as long as you're not hurting yeah. anyone else or like shoving your ideologies down someone's throat. Right. Cause like I definitely grew up with being shoved Same. religion down my throat. I feel like yeah. so many people 
to have because, you know, we're so shaped from our parents' perspectives. Yeah. They, like, you know, if they tell us Santa's real, we believe them. Right. If they tell us anything, like, we pick up all of their beliefs, which is crazy and fucked up, but. Yeah, I have this theory that's, like, I think heaven, the idea of heaven was, like, created to keep, you know, allow people to continue living after, like, a loved one or someone, like, that they cared about died. Yeah. You know, because death and and your own death, you know, that's a hard reality to grasp that we are mortal and that the people that you love and care about are mortal. And And temporary. Right, and it's temporary. And so that you know, that space of afterwards where, you know, everyone gets together in the afterlife and they're all happy and there's nothing wrong and nothing bad ever happens to them. And, you know, it's because they lived a good life and they were a good person that they go to this place and it's happiness forever. And, you know, that's what everyone wants for their loved one. You know, that is literally the image of, if you take religion out of it, sorry, that is literally what everyone wants for their loved one. And they get that in death. So, that comforts someone enough to be able to move on and cope with death. Yeah. You know, and then hell comes into the picture, and that scares people into following the rules of religion. Definitely. And it scares them so much, and it's like, it scares them into pushing it down other people's throats. Yeah. You know? Because, you know, if they care about you, they're going to be like, you need to do this, or you're going to end up here. Yeah. And that's like a real fear. Mm-hmm. And and I understand that fear. You know, that is a scary thought. The fact that if after you die, you go to this place and it's never ending hell, literally totally. never ending hell. Right. And you're tortured, whatever, for the end of your days, your soul, whatever. That's terrifying <laughs> enough to make you follow the rules of this religion. And, you know, and g- circling back the idea, I don't want to rant on religion too much, but the idea of, like, God and the overpowering, you know, God, Allah, like, there's so many different names for the same the same idea of, right. like, this overarching creator of the universe, creator of the world, creator of you individually, and you're different, and, you know, you specifically put together, you know, right. and it makes you feel special. It makes you feel needed. It makes you feel wanted. It makes you feel loved when nobody else gives that to you. Right. And that is something that a lot of people struggle with, and they can't be by themselves, you know, and that's. They need that reassurance. Right. And that's just part of being human is it's hard to be alone. Yeah. You know, it's really hard to be alone, and and that's just part of being human. So that, you know, I remember my mom, and she's going, like, every time she goes through something, she goes to church. And, you know, she raises her hands and speaks in tongues and it's terrifying and (laughs) blah, 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 you know, and like all of this shit. But, you know, and I realized and I hated her for it for so long. She pushed it down my throat. She, you know, I was really rebellious as a kid. She said I had a rebellious demon inside me. Tried to call it out. My uncle called me a demon. I feel that. She, yeah, she like tried me in a corner one day and was like trying to call out my demon, literally, and like speaking in tongues and shit. And it was terrifying. What the fuck? Yeah, it was scary, but. Oh my God. You know, and I kind of resented her for that for a while. And then I went to church with her one day because she begged me to. And she knew how I felt about it, you know, but she thought yeah. going back to church where I grew up would make me change. But, right. you know, I just observed her and I realized like she needs this. Yeah. You know, you I'd, she would crumble to pieces. If she didn't have this. Definitely. Like, s- people need that assurance. Need yeah. that in the back of their head that they're going to have that place to fall on. Right. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. I agree. You know, I think if hope is hope. Yeah. Period. No matter where it comes from. Yeah. Per. Per. So, let's talk about Bumble. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, circling back to Todd, the crazy s- psycho. Again, Todd. Again, Todd. <laughs> Todd, what the fuck? Back to Todd. I met Todd off Bumble, Mm -hmm. which, you know, like my therapist said, maybe you shouldn't be meeting people off Bumble. But here's the thing. I met you off Bumble. Yeah. I met Philip, my podcast producer, off Bumble. I've met great people off Bumble. Mm -hmm. I've also met really fucked up, crazy people off Bumble. And this comes to the question... Do I delete Bumble like my therapist suggests? And or do I keep it and just, you know, is it is it worth the hurting? Is it helping me or is it hurting me? 
I think that's a great question. Um, and I think it's great that you're evaluating that, you know. Um, my argument would be to keep Bumble, but be more skeptical and be more strict with yeah. the people you actually go see. Definitely. And, like, before you see them in person, you keep it purely online, you know, and even stay chatting with them on Bumble. Don't give them any of your social medias, you know, like, keep it strict, yeah. you know, because there are crazies out there, <laughs> yeah. y'all. There are crazies. Yeah. And <laughs> Todd. But We're talking about you. <laughs> yeah, Todd. Todd. <laughs> <laughs> He's for sure, like, going to see this someday, too. Yeah. And I don't Fuck care you, if he Todd. does. Fuck you, Todd. Fuck you, Todd. You're traumatizing as hell. Yeah, you fucking traumatize me, bitch. Yeah, get your shit together. Yeah. Go, uh, go to therapy, yeah, please. Yeah, go to fucking therapy. And while while we're at it, telling people to go to therapy, let's tell... No, actually, never mind. I'm not going to. Mm. I'm not going to. No, I want to know now. I was about to say, let's tell, like, all of our exes to go to therapy as well. Yeah, I feel like I kind of did my exes wrong, though. Okay, well, all of mine need to go to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and I can say that because I'm going to therapy. I think everyone should go to therapy. Yeah, I everyone need to go, to, go therapy. to therapy. I need to go to more therapy. I went to therapy all four years of high school. That's but amazing. I That's would amazing. not have been here without it. I'm just going to be straight up. I wouldn't I have been here without it. I wish I did Doc it. Doc Carroll, if you're out here, girl, I love you. Hey, I had, I had my school counselor who would walk to my house that was a block <gasps> away from the high school. Wow. She would knock on my window and make me go to school because my mom wouldn't. And um, I wouldn't have graduated if it wasn't for her. Even though I was doing really good in school and, like, taking all AP classes. But, like, the middle of my senior year, like, or towards the end, I was just like, I'm depressed as fuck. I can't do this anymore. Everyone I go to school with is negative and mean. And, oh, my God, I was just, I was getting bullied by my first period Spanish teacher. And oh she God. was, she is was my ex's aunt oh and she was like no. bipolar and crazy and it was oh just God. bad and i was just having a bad time and almost didn't graduate but shout out to my school counselor dolores you deserve a thank raise thank you dolores and thank you dolores i love you you're awesome um but people like that like they give you hope and humanity exactly like when when you have no one or when you think all hope is lost like someone like, that one person makes you smile or yeah. helps you out, and it just changes everything. Yeah. You were that person for me when we first met. I was? Yeah. That makes for me sure. feel really good. I, I feel like you were m- you were that person for me as well, 100%. Um. <laughs> 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 okay, back to Bumble. So, I have a reason for the reason, I, reason I'm saying this. Um, I have been on Bumble as well, obviously. That's how I met you. I was on Bumble for, like, a solid year, maybe. And when I moved to California, and it was in the middle of COVID, and I had no way of meeting people. I wasn't in school. You know, I was just going back and forth to work, sleeping, watching TV, work, going back and, you know, repeating the same cycle, and I had no way of meeting people. I'm a really social person. Same. So I needed that interaction. And so I went on Bumble, and um, and I've always had, like, this weird, like, I romanticized love. And, like, a little too much. Me so too. there, you know, yeah, there is that. <laughs> and so it's easy to fall for people and to let them persuade you into a feeling of comfort and love and acceptance. And euphoria. When, right, and that's euphoria. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. But, um, yeah, you know, it can, that want for that affection can lead you to dark places, you know, because you'll overlook the red flags because you want that so bad and you are willing to put your own self-care aside just to get that feeling again. It's kind of like a drug, you know. It's a little bit like a drug. But anyway, um, I started becoming more and more strict with Bumble because I met a couple of creepos, right? And they made me feel uncomfortable, and I immediately left. I felt taken advantage of. You know, and I was like, why the fuck did I do that? You know, and I keep doing the same thing over and over again. You know, I'm going over there thinking that they want to get to know me. They try and get to know me. And then we hook up. And then after I just feel nasty. Yeah. You know, I and you just feeling. feel gross. I actually read an article about the science behind that the other day. It's really interesting. Women and men, after they have sex, have completely different chemical reactions. Wow. And that's why a lot of the time women will feel the ick. You get the ick from yeah. it if it doesn't satisfy your emotional needs 
Right. And, um. I know it feels like I'll have to take four showers. Mm, yeah. Just like that. Yeah. It can be, it, yeah, it just gives you the ick. So, you know, I realized I really liked Devin and I deleted Bumble when I met him because, um, we went to Chipotle and then we went back to his house and I was expecting him to make a move. So I kind of like stayed on the edge of his bed, you know, and he was like, you know, if you're cold and you can get out of the covers and I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. You know, like you're hot. So I might, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you're That's hot. So I might just, you know, I guess snuggle under the covers, but I'm still like arm's length from him. He's got a king size bed. So I'm like arm's length and he just laid there and we just laughed and nothing happened and the time came and he drove me home he didn't ask for me to stay later we finished our movie you know we ate our chipotle and he drove me home and he pulls up to my apartment and he says do you want to hang out tomorrow and i go um yeah <laughs> i think the fuck yes <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. The fuck yeah yeah major like green flags major green flags. right and i'm like okay okay wait you know, men will do whatever they can to get in your panties. And sometimes they like to play the long game. Yeah, I'm calling y'all out. <laughs> Literally, I'm calling y'all out right now. I know the ones who like do to it. play the long game. And it's the worst. You, you are the reason that people, women especially, are emotionally damaged. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm like, I'm like trying to think of everything. I'm like, okay, maybe he's playing the long game. So we hang out the next day. And then we miss a day. And then we hung out the next day. And, you know, I had actually gone on a date with a person, with a girl the day before that. Ooh. I was really excited about her because it was Ooh. one of my first dates with a girl. She that, was really awesome. That shit's so exciting. It was really exciting. But then, I, you know, I started hanging out with him and I just forgot. You know, I, I wasn't on Bumble and I just forgot about it. And we kept hanging out. And we hung out for maybe like two weeks. And he, I slept over at his, pli- his place three times. He slept over at my place three times so that's six sleepovers that's where he didn't even kiss me the most he did was like put his arm around me when we were like cuddling but it wasn't like spooning so his dick wasn't up against me <laughs> or anything like that you know because everyone sexual. knows where that can go yeah um very he was very quick. careful and he was really careful so i you know and finally you know i'm getting to the point i'm like is this Okay, now I'm starting to question. I'm like, well, does he even like me like that? Does he think we're friends? Like, because yeah. I'm starting to get attached. Yeah. You know, I'm like, all right, this is a respectful, emotional man in front of me that likes to hang out with me, likes my personality, thinks I'm cute, you know. Okay. Like, now I'm getting a little, like, what's going on? Yeah. So, finally, he makes a move, and, you know, the rest is history. We dated um, and hung out and just, like, fucked around for two months and then, no, t- three months, and then he asked me to be his girlfriend. Well, no, then we became exclusive for a week or two, and then after that, he asked me to be his girlfriend, and we just celebrated our three months, <gasps> and we're thinking about in, like, six months maybe moving in together. Oh, fuck yeah. And this is by far the healthiest, longest relationship I've ever had. You know what? All from Bumble. It, shout out Bumble, and let me just say, I feel like building that relationship off of, like, you took time to get to know each other and, Mm -hmm. like, built up the tension and, like, got to know each other, I feel like that is so much more enjoyable. Yeah. Like, over time, getting to know someone, becoming friends with them, and then it's, like, it's even better, like, when you finally get together. Yeah, and it makes things more passionate, too. Exactly, and it's just, like, the perfect foundation. Like, respect, kindness, trust, and then... Taking it slow, I feel right. like, is just so good. Really quick, I wanted to talk about how I met I met this guy named Dan Van. So I sleep in this parking lot, right? And there's, like, this community of car sleepers, and there's, like, five other cars. And I sleep here because it's better than sleeping on a street. Like, it, it feels nice knowing that I'm parking next to people who are sleeping in their cars as well, going through the same situation. Like, it, it feels... It feels like I'm I'm a part of a community, <laughs> which yeah. like you're not alone. Yeah, I'm not exactly. I'm not alone, and it, it feels good. And I match with this guy. I'm Bumble. <laughs> his name's Daniel, and um, he's I think he's gonna come on the podcast. But he lives in his van in the in that place that I park at, and I'll just like park a few spaces near him, and 
uh, we'll smoke together sometimes. Well, we smoke like once a week, but you know he door dashes every day. I Instacart every day, but we're always there at like eleven p.m. and like. Yeah, I, I only hang out with him once a week, but it's just so nice to have someone um, who's going through the same shit and to just be be around that. Like, it, 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 I should be, like, scared as fuck living in my car with, like, a serial killer on the loose. And, like, I am because it's scary, but I'm so thankful for everything that I have. Like, I saw this homeless man, and he all he had was a basketball, a water bottle, a backpack, and a book. And he was just sitting in the sun reading. And it literally brought me to tears because I was like, that's that's all he needs. He's living day to day. He's not thinking about the future. He's not thinking about the past. He's thinking about what do I need right now? What do I need today? What do I need to get through today? And I thought it was the most inspiring thing ever. <laughs> and um, just seeing that, I was like, you know what? I'm grateful I even have a car. And... It changed my perspective on a lot of things. I feel like my perspective has even grown, like for the from the journey I've been on. But I have a tomorrow. I have a meeting with like some. <laughs> they're like housing coordinators, and it's like a program that helps teens who are eligible, and they might be able to like help me for a down payment for an apartment. That would be awesome. It would be the dream. <laughs> like I'm, dude. I've been living at, in my car for like two two and a half months now and like to have my own space that's like everything like that's what I'm grinding for that's what I that's why I instacart 12 hours a day that's why I'm sleeping in my car that's why all my family cut me off like (laughs) so y'all better blow this podcast the (laughs) fuck up yeah right now (laughs) you heard it right here blow it the fuck up this is this girl's dream her passion (laughs) She and has so much to say, and it's beautiful, so listen <laughs> up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> yeah, you, this is Pablo's dream, too, you know? No, thank you for saying that, though. I, I really, That's very sweet. We have so much more crazy stories to talk about, so much more to talk about, so stay tuned for that. If you'd like to see more of that, then catch the next episode. And this has been Your Friends Podcast with Megan and Liv. Ow, ow. Ow, ow. And, um, yeah, give a like, subscribe, and our Instagrams and other social media platforms are linked below. We out. We out. Woo. Okay, how was that? That's fire. Fire? Okay. Fuck yeah. That was fire. Fuck yeah, let's go. Every time I talk to you, I feel like I learn something. (laughs) <laughs> like learn how to talk better learn about life like everything and the audience is going to feel the same way you know well i'm really happy that you let me do this with you i'm so happy and i'm really proud of you i i'm proud of you girl you've you found your passion and you chased after it and that is something a lot of people don't have the courage to do and that is something i really admire about you and i'm so happy that you get to be like experience this shit with me i am too i'm so excited this is gonna blow the fuck up were strapped on this ride with me i mean you know all the way girly all, all yes, the way all the way like we're doing this shit we're gonna be the next brooke and tana mojo we don't need <laughs> fuck that <Todd. laughs> fuck that you mean todd i mean todd. <laughs> dude i am hyped i feel good i've been keeping the cameras rolling this whole time so oh <laughs> shit <laughs> Aw. You're the best, <laughs> man. Oh, yeah. I've had such, like, life's really looking up, you know? Good. Like, you deserve everything good that comes to you. <laughs> Seriously. Don't you ever doubt it. Pod Dog Studios. Hey, shout out Pod Dog Studios, the best podcast studio ever. My podcast producer, Philip, the best guy in the game. Ow, ow. He does the lighting. He does He does the everything. He does the, the cameras. Setup. The setup. The setup. That podcast studio. So hit up Pod Dog Studios <laughs> for your podcast and photo shoot needs. Do it today, y'all. Do it Get today. your dreams. Uh, yeah. Pod Dog Studios. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>